Giannis and the Bucks were eliminated in a pretty humiliating way from the playoffs. We we're always surprised to see a number one seed eliminated in the first round, but this loss was genuinely historic. A defeat in five games to the eighth side has to be one of the most painful a top seed has ever experienced. As a reminder, the Bucks were ahead by more than 15 points going into the fourth quarter. They would become the first team ever to lose that kind of lead in a game when facing elimination. That was just not supposed to happen to a team of the Bucks quality. This was no isolated incident either. The Bucks had dropped a double-digit lead in Game 4 as well. After all, they had won a title just two years ago with a very similar squad. But most importantly, the Bucks have Giannis Atentacumbo. Widely considered the best player in the world, he is supposed to be able to prevent this sort of collapse. But the Greek freak was simply not himself. The seven-time All-Star usually attacks the basket ferociously when things aren't going right. But Giannis kept settling for half-hearted jumpers and similarly uninspiring defense. He couldn't even save matters from the line. Atentacumbo missed 13 free throws, including six in money time. But those riding off Giannis do so at their own peril. He remains one of the absolute best basketball players on earth. We also believe the Bucks will continue to reliably contend for the foreseeable future. Here is why. Giannis was playing injured. We all love those stories about heroic players overcoming injuries to win in the playoffs, like when Michael Jordan beat the Utah Jazz with a 103-degree fever, or when Willis Reed hobbled out of the tunnel to help the Knicks win Game 7. But ultimately, even the biggest stars are human beings, and they can't quite have the same impact on the game when they play injured. And Giannis was a mess physically in the series against the Heat. Here is the full rundown of what the superstar was dealing with. The Greek freak came out of Game 1 in the first quarter after Kevin Love tried to take a charge off the star, and he landed badly, causing a back contusion. The pain was so bad that Atentacumbo missed all of Game 2 and 3 as well. So when Giannis returned, the Heat were ahead 2-1 and firmly in the driver's seat for the series. He played in Game 4, but Giannis was obviously playing through discomfort throughout the matchup with the Heat. Nonetheless, in his first complete game in the playoffs, the player notched 26 points, passed for 13 assists, and took down 10 rebounds. Unfortunately, Giannis was still in pain in Game 5 and lacked the killer instinct we are used to seeing from him at his best. Still, the two-time MVP took down 20 rebounds and scored an impressive 38 points. If so, Atenakunbo was injured in the only two complete games he appeared in, yet he still managed to put in impressive performances. But we are left to wonder, would a fully healthy Giannis have managed to beat the Heat? Quite possibly. The superstar was simply unlucky to experience a consequential injury right at the start of a competitive series. You don't become a superstar without being fiercely competitive. Talent just isn't enough. And after that elimination to the Heat, you could tell Giannis was seething. The great players find extra gear to shift to when their backs are to the wall. Take LeBron, for example. In 2011, James did not play well. He averaged a mere 17.8 points, incredibly low for the highest career scorer in NBA history. But the numbers don't tell the whole story. He looked inert and lacking in confidence. Dirk Nowitzki and the Mavericks beat him on the way to a six-game series win, but as a truly great player, James learned from the experience. He later said, losing in the finals to Dallas after playing like shit. I hit the reset button, went back to the basics, and worked on things in my game I needed to get better at so the defense couldn't just sit on one thing. Hours and hours and hours every day in the offseason on it. Came back locked in. The following year, Miami took the title, and LeBron was absolutely dominant, scoring 28 points a game and taking down 10 rebounds on average. There are signs that Giannis is undergoing a similar process. When a reporter asked if he felt the season had been a failure, Atentacumbo was equally angry and philosophical. He pointed out, Michael Jordan played 15 years and won six championships. The other nine years was a failure? Giannis said, Every year you work, you work towards something, towards a goal, right? Which is to get a promotion, be able to take care of your family, to be able to provide the house for them or take care of your parents. He said, you work towards a goal. It's not a failure, it's steps to success. The Greek freak will take this setback personally and find ways to improve his game. Considering how good the guy already is, that is a legitimately terrifying prospect. Bucks fans will support him regardless. Milwaukee fans absolutely adore Giannis, and why wouldn't they? He is probably the best Bucks player of all time. 
While Oscar Robertson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar are all-time greats, they had most of their best seasons elsewhere. The Greek freak has only been a buck, and so they hope will remain a Milwaukee star until his retirement, but they also love his personality. When he first arrived in the city, Giannis delighted fans by trying Midwestern delicacies like corn dogs, Kool-Aid, and Funyuns and posting his reactions. They remember when he filled rookie Sterling Brown's car with popcorn. If you ever visit Milwaukee, none of this is news to you. The grinning visage of the Greek freak is everywhere, not just in front of the arena, but in the various neighborhoods where regular life occurs. For example, a mural of the player covers the external walls of the corner market in the Tippecanoe neighborhood. The superstar has returned the love to his adopted city. When the NBA suspended the 2000 NBA season because of COVID, the staff at the Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee were furloughed. But Giannis put up $100,000 to the staff to help them through the hard times. He already won a championship for the city. The failure. No, sorry Giannis. Learning process of the 2022-23 season really stings for the Bucks right now. But in the long term, it really won't matter much. Does anyone look back on LeBron's or Magic Johnson's careers and think of the titles they didn't win? Unless your name is Bill Russell, there will always be far more seasons without titles than with. That is normal and does not count against the player's legacy. We tend to hold a lack of title against great players who didn't get one. Just think of Dominique Wilkins, Allen Iverson, Charles Barkley, and John Stockton. But Giannis is already out of that proud but beleaguered group. The 2021 NBA title he took with the Bucks will always set him a cut above. Furthermore, he did it with less help than most other superstars. With all due respect to Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday, they aren't massive stars. There is a reason Atena Kumbo was the unquestioned NBA Finals Series MVP. Considering that the Greek freak is just 28 and already has achieved everything imaginable, there is no reason to believe 2021 will be his last title with the Bucks. Bad seasons only make superstars like Giannis hungry and eager to learn from their mistakes, and Milwaukee will have to build a better team around the superstar. He will most likely stay with the Bucks for the long term. Because of the love Giannis has for Wisconsin and the way the fan base loves him back, his relationship with the Bucks is destined to be a long-term one. Former Bucks coach Mike Budenholzer explained why the team would want this guy around. It starts with his desire to improve and put in the work to get better, not just every year but every day. We look for a few things as far as who we want to be, work rate, attitude, a panoply of skills, and he checks all the boxes. He has an incredible drive but also a humility to him and an expectation that he can get better. So, Bud summarized, yeah, we'll keep him. Though Budenholzer is no longer with the team, the sentiment remains for the Bucks. But what about Atentacunbo? Does he want to stay in Milwaukee? After the Bucks won the title, Giannis said some concerning things from the perspective of his hometown fans. The newly minted champion exclaimed, One challenge was to bring a championship here and we did. It was very hard, but we did. Very, very hard. I just love challenges. What's the next challenge? The next challenge might not be here. Me and my family chose to stay in this city that we all love and have taken care of us, or now. In two years, that might change. Towards the end of the 2022-23 to season, it appeared Giannis had changed his mind. He told CBS, as long as I'm healthy and as long as they want me to be a part of the Milwaukee Bucks organization, I would love to stay there. What does all this mean? The Greek freak remains arguably the best player in the NBA, and Milwaukee will give him all the support he needs to continue challenging for titles. Final word. The Bucks imploded in the playoffs, but there are some real caveats here. Giannis was playing injured. The Heat have turned out far better than anyone expected. And remember, the Bucks were pretty great in the regular season, compiling a .708 winning percentage, the highest in the NBA. So this team can play regardless of having a bad series. Most importantly, we know that any team built around Giannis is a possible contender. So this is nothing but a detour on the long road of a Tentacunbo toward immortality. We have no doubt he will get there. So this disappointment, don't you dare call it a failure, will not matter in the long term.